Thank you very much, um, Chairperson, uh, Mr. President. <clears throat> we thank the CR17 campaign for having saved us this nightmare because this would have been our state of the nation address and it was going to be the most boring state of the nation address. Thank you for that. President, a more significant part of the state of the nation address delivered here on the 7th of February 2019 lacked or originality and made very dangerous Honorable Malema, proposals. please give me a minute. Honorable members, honorable members, honorable members, honorable minister Zulu, honorable minister Zulu, no. Honorable members, can we have some order and respect in the House, please? I have called the minister to order. I do not need members helping me. Honorable Malema, please proceed. I see you brought the A-team of old age arrangements to come and defend you here today. A clear demonstration of your hatred of young people. You have no confidence in the youth of your own party and the future of South Africa. Let us start with the dangerous proposals that you have made here and I caution you that you will soon become the enemy of the people and workers if you go ahead with some of the proposals. The first proposal is your intention to unbundle, break down ESCOM with the aim of privatization of some components of the utility. You have already started the privatization of ESCOM power generation because effectively independent power producers are privatization of ESCOM. It is a fact that at the center of ESCOM's problems are the power purchase agreements which force ESCOM to buy power at an unaffordable and impractical prices through irrational business model. We know that your friends such as Trevor Manuel through Old Mutual and your relatives through Patrice Motsepe stand to benefit from privatization of ESCOM. We want to tell you here that ESCOM will not be privatized and they are not retrenchment that are going to take place. If you proceed to privatize ESCOM, be rest assured that we as the economic freedom fighters we will seriously confront your government and IPPCs because they represent capitalist greed and obsession with money at the expense of our people. The president did not give a thorough diagnosis of the challenges that confront ESCOM, but has a remedy that will benefit his friends and family. Your diagnosis deals only with the financial aspect of the crisis, and you don't provide structural and strategic diagnosis of the asset. Mr. President, you have Chairperson, completely abandoned politics to impress white Chairperson, monopoly capital in particular and the West and point America. Point of order. Honorable Malema, please take your seat. There is a point of order. Absolutely, Chairperson. I think that it is clear that we may not allow in the joint sitting that uh, uh, aspersions are cast on the president. If, if there's anything that pertains to the president and the relatives, the honorable which member knows the Chepesin, principle, I've raised room? the principle. Which rule, which rule, which rule is rising on? Who Please took take you out? Please take your seat, Who took honorable you member. Out? You can just rise and talk. This is not your house. Speak honorable down. member, I did not recognize you. We, we honorable member, please. I had not recognized you. Please desist. Honorable member, get to your point of order, please. My point is that uh, uh, personal aspersions may not be cast upon the honorable president. Thank you. Honorable mem, no, I'm ruling. Please put your hands up. Honorable members, I will look into the record. For the moment, let us allow the rules of debate to continue. I think that we will be able to deal with this in your different speeches as you debate. Please continue, Honorable Malema. Your wrong diagnosis ex is extremely dangerous and not different from fake doctors who give wrong medication to patients and endangering their lives. Your approach to ESCOM is going to destroy the power utility and as people who will be here and still active in the next 30 to 40 years, we are not going to allow you to destroy ESCOM for quick personal gains. 
What is more painful is that you have abandoned politics and you put profit and business in everything else you do. There is no ideological justification you can give on why you want to unbundle ESCOM, except the fact that you and your immediate stand to benefit, including your companies, because you are still an active a business person who just took leave to come and irritate us here. Let us deal with ESCOM problems honestly and openly, because an attempt to privatize it will never be accepted. And you must be rest assured, President, that if you are not going to give an assurance that you, have, you will relook into this ESCOM matter, will waste no time, will go to the picket lines and defend this strategic asset of our people. You made an announcement here that Total has made an enormous oil and gas discovery, which you claim will be a game changer. What you didn't say is that more than 90% of the oil and gas discovery will benefit foreign companies. These people came here, colonized us, took our resources, took our gold, took our diamond, and now they come and take the oil and gas under our own watch, yet we claim to have defeated colonialism. It is not correct that we should allow such things. Your minister, who are supposed to be one of the progressive ministers, Minister of Mineral Resources, has had, had to withdraw the MPRDA, which had progressive proposals in order to allow for total to plunder our resources. Oil and gas can be a curse to a nation if not properly managed. And if you continue with the indecisiveness around natural resources, the oil and gas will be a curse to our nation like it is in many African countries. We demand that all oil and gas discoveries must be nationalized and should create sovereign wealth fund to save the resources in the same way the government of Norway did. We will not be shocked if the 10% BEE shareholder of the total consortium that made the oil and gas discovery has some direct or indirect relationship with your companies, knowing you, you. This oil and gas must be declared national asset to avoid finding you inside because Chairperson. you are a shrewd businessman. President, you should, you should be honest. Chairperson, I, I, I really appeal that we may not allow casting of personal reflections. But, but I know in you and this all this, it's Chairperson. unacceptable, Chairperson. it's unparliamentary. It may not be allowed to reign at all. We're not going to be disturbed here by hairdressers here, man. Knowing you, Honourable, Honourable members. No, 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 no. no. Honourable, Honourable members. Order, Chairperson. No, Chairperson, I have to rule on this point of, of order. The procedure of this house is that Honourable he Shibambo, I did not he recognize the rules, you. But he's just standing up and talking there. You're not giving him a... Honourable Shibambo. Please protect... Honourable Shibambo, you two were not recognized. <laughs> Honourable members. Honorable members. I... Honorable members. Honorable Malema, please continue sitting down, I'll call you. Honorable members, a debate on the state of the nation address is not an easy debate. Not in the year of the elections. Members will say whatever they say. Members Jumping up and down us don't apply. But I agree with your ruling, but can we please ensure that this harassment of opposition speakers stops? Thank you, sir. Please proceed, Honorable Malema. Mr. President, you must never be impressed by this type of conduct. It comes from the previous arrangement, and the previous arrangements did not survive because it thought it had protection of such illiterate members of parliament who do not understand the rules of the engagement. President, you should be honest that you have never been committed. Honorable Malema, take your seat, please. You are on a point of order, sir. Absolutely, Honorable House Chair, on a point of personal privilege. That's the principle. Honorable. I, I, I definitely do not take kindly to Honorable Malema saying I'm illiterate, not by any standard, Honorable not any standards. It is personal attack. I think it's unwarranted. Honorable member, you are out of order. 
Honorable members, every time you allow a debate to become personal, this is what we, we get to. Honorable, I cannot rule in your favor because Honorable Malema did not say you personally are illiterate. He refers to illiteracy. The last time I checked, the word illiteracy was not unparliamentary. So please remember, honorable members, also remember that that which you are pointing at one member will point at you. And it might be very difficult when it comes back to you. Honorable Malemba, please confine yourself to your speech and let us proceed. No, you can say anything about us. We've got thick skins. <laughs> President, you must be honest. You have never believed in the expropriation of land without compensation. And the report which was adopted by this democratic parliament already has said that this parliament, fifth parliament, must conclude this work. Your leadership will fail to do so because you are not convinced about the need to take back the land from colonial settlers, majority of whom are your friends and funders. Your refusal to acknowledge the existence and phenomenon of white monopoly capitalism is because you are a product of this greedy capitalist. If it was not because of the Oppenheimers, you were not going to be where you are today. You will not have founded the NUM, and you are not going to be the first general secretary of the NUM. Without changing property relations in South Africa, President, you will never be able to defeat poverty, unemployment, and inequality. Your collective cowardice and fear of white people will keep black people in permanent poverty and starvation. You have abandoned your own party just to appease whiteness. You no longer follow your party line but that of the Oppenheimers because things like expropriation of land are the resolutions of your own party, but every time you speak about them, you are wishy-washy. In the 2014, 2016, 2019 election manifest of the EFF, we committed to mainstream early childhood development, and we know that the ruling party has once again taken the commitment which will see children starting school at the age of three. In the SONA address, you said the rollout of toilets in all schools will be finalized by 2030. But you want us to believe that this year you will take three-year-olds to schools. How should parents trust the ANC with their how should parents trust the ANC with their children when you cannot abolish pit toilets? Let's build school infrastructure, abolish pit toilets, then roll out comprehensive ECD without, with, with a common curriculum. You cannot take three-year-olds to schools which have got pit toilets. You are just sending them to a death squad. That move is highly not so cal calculated, uh, Mr. President. If the ANC was really committed to make sure that we meet the requirements of fourth industrial revolution, like the commitment of giving people tablets. Why are you not talking about giving first an affordable data? Because you are going to give the kids tablets in schools, yet data is expensive. Those tablets are going to be useless. But it will not be for the first time, because you are known to have given people tabs without water. So you will not be practicing this type of uh, things uh, for the first time. President, your manifesto speaks about industrialization, including industrial parks. But your manifesto does not make emphasis on this point. The EFF unleashed this and made a very elaborate and cogent plan during the manifesto launch. You came here to repeat what the EFF has said. And to show that you do not have plans, you even go to an extent of saying provinces must give you plans and identify earlier areas which can be industrial zones. A clear plagiarism, President. But I don't blame you. The EFF is a think tank of South Africa. That's why half the time you have to borrow from the EFF. There was a commitment to nationalize South African Reserve Bank. You no longer talk about it. It's an ANC decision. There is a decision to provide free education, ANC agreed to, yet children are being killed for demanding that which you said you will provide. Today, we have a memorial service of Mulungis Madonzela, our revolutionary fighter who was killed fighting for a just cause, free education. May his soul rest in perfect revolutionary peace.
President, you say all of these things through your own party. Yet when you come and assume the status of the President of the Republic of South Africa, you abandon the party position and replace it with a position of whiteness that surrounds you. You want to sound white and do things white because you don't believe in the total liberation of African children. President, we welcome your renewed energy to fight corruption. But let me tell you, I will never believe you until you fire Nomvula Mkonyan. Why do you postpone fighting corruption to someone else and not do it yourself? If there is a clear evidence of Nomvula implicated, Honorable Nomvula implicated in corruption, she has even collapsed the whole Department of Water. You are standing here telling us how you are going to correct the problems of water and Honorable Malema, would you rather not bring a substantive motion to this House, the National Assembly, rather than to continue in that direction? Now, I'm saying you cannot have some of the people highly implicated, President, in your cabinet, and you come and tell us you are committed to fight corruption. Unless you too have benefited from frozen chicken. If you have eaten a frozen chicken, then you will be scared. Unless Nomvula has got something we don't know on you. Because Honorable there's Malema, clear evidence that Honorable she's Malema, involved in corruption. Honorable Nomvula Mkonyani is a minister of this house. Honorable Nomvula Mkonyani. The minister. Uh, she's in the wrong place. She's not supposed to be here to start with. So, President, can't you address the ANC caucus and ask them to take, to, to take a very clean example from Vincent Smith? When Honorable Vincent Smith, Malema. Honorable Vincent Smith was accused of corruption, although he did not leave parliament, but he recused himself from serious responsibilities because he knew that his continuation of occupying that office will make people to lose the aim and the purpose of that committee. Why can't, we're not saying they are guilty. Why can't Nomvula, Honorable Nomvula resign to a backbencher or to go and work from Little House and say, let me save my party and the state of, of the Republic of South Africa and go and clean my name. Honorable Vincent Smith did exactly that. He's not from the EFF, but that is an honorable thing to do. When you are accused, you assume lesser responsibility to give yourself sufficient time to deal with allegations leveled against you. President, reduce your cabinet. Do away with deputy ministers. There are so many deputy ministers sitting here, I don't even know them. And I think that where you introduce a deputy minister, you must justify it why. Why should they be a deputy minister of communication, for instance? Why should they be a, a, a deputy minister of small business, for instance, or the department of small business itself? Why can't we merge education, science, and technology together? Have a minister dedicated to education, then introduce a deputy minister with powers announced by you, not powers uh, uh, directed to the deputy by the minister, because even these ministers are greedy. They don't even give their deputies uh, any role to play. You ought to announce where you introduce a deputy minister and say, this is the deputy minister. This will be a role of that particular deputy minister. You've got too many deputy ministers for patronage, for factional reasons, you've got too big cabinet for no reason to balance dynamics and factionalism at the expense of the taxpayer. President, my advice is very simple. Reduce cabinet, have it small. People like Honorable Jeff Radebe, I have nothing personal against him, yet his, his stay is, he has stayed for too long from 1994. Anyone who was there during Mandela's era must be put aside. And then let the young blood come in, people with energy. I have nothing wrong with Minister Naledi Pando. Schools, people are, are being killed. 
Universities are, are burning. She's nowhere. What are we going to see? We're going to find General Beggy Ken, the one who's fighting the protesters. The protesters are not looking for police. They are looking for a minister of education to go and help them. We have seen Begitele everywhere. No ministers, minister of housing. People are marching for houses. There is no minister of housing. And when you look at who is a minister of human settlement, the person, the person that by just appearance, you can see this one will never go to any protest, this one. So we cannot have such people in positions of responsibility. Minister, get young people. President, get young people, get energetic people. They may not be young, but let them be like Beggy Tele, be at the picket lines, listen to our people, resolve their problems. That is the type of a small cabinet we want to see when we come back. And that cabinet will happen under the government of the EFF, which is going to expropriate land and give jobs to our people. We make no apology about expropriation of land without compensation. We mean it. It's not a campaigning tool. Thank you, it's Honorable a non negotiable uh, cardinal pillar which we are prepared to lay our lives for. Expropriation of land without compensation will happen in our lifetime. Thank you. South Africa, 8 May, vote EFF. Thank you.